Hi guys. Hey folks, I'm Tina Hui with Follow Coin, and we're here at the O'Reilly Radar Media Summit for Bitcoin and blockchain. With Andreas Antonopoulos, I don't think you need an introduction, but please do uh, introduce yourself. Well, uh, I've uh, written a book called Mastering Bitcoin, and I'm here to present tonight and talk about some interesting aspects of Bitcoin. What are the interesting aspects of Bitcoin that interest you in 2015? Well, uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about high-level um, concepts like why open standards, open source, and finance work very well together, and how they create ideal conditions for innovation. So, what are your thoughts on that exactly? Like finance, innovation, tech, fintech as a whole. Well, do you see Bitcoin emerging as kind of a big player in the fintech space? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, it's already uh, capturing the attention of many of the large uh, financial technology providers and financial service providers. And uh, I don't think they really know what to do about it or how to deal with it. Uh, we see a lot of hedging, right? It's like, oh, the currency is kind of silly, but we believe in the technology. Uh, <laughs> right. A year ago, they were saying that both the currency and the technology were silly, but now they can't sustain that argument anymore. So now they're hedging. Um, we're going to see the tide turning over time, I think. Uh, it's absolutely uh, beyond a doubt in my mind that the level of innovation that's going on, the job creation that's going on in this space, is one of the most exciting things I've seen in my lifetime. It is amazing to me how many incredibly smart people are choosing to work in the Bitcoin industry are, and are leaving well-established, very large technology companies to come work in this space. And that's not because they're caught up in some kind of crazy Ponzi scheme. Uh, many of them don't even own Bitcoin. They come to this because they understand this is powerful, this is disruptive, this is highly uh, competitive and amazing technology, and they want to have a part of it. So what, okay, so there's a lot of argument, right? Technology versus Bitcoin as a currency or asset class. Right. Where is, where do you see everything being interesting, intriguing, and the I, I think people are missing the point, and it's really hard to understand the idea of a currency that is a technology and a technology that is based around a currency. You can't separate the two. Bitcoin the technology doesn't work without Bitcoin the currency. Bitcoin the currency doesn't work with the technology. You need the currency in order to have value, and that value creates the security of the network. So the idea that you can somehow have blockchain but without the currency is uh, no show, show, shows a lack of understanding of what the technology is. And, and that's because before Bitcoin, there never was something that was simultaneously a technology and a currency in this particular form. And so it's confusing to people. Right. But I think gradually we're going to see a better understanding of how decentralized consensus algorithms work, um, how the theory behind them and how the incentives work. And people will come to accept that this is an extremely powerful model. And the proof is simply in the continued resilience and life of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been declared dead. Dozens and dozens of times. How many times? Hundreds? Oh, Since I don't you last know. saw you at Dogecoin SF? Oh, it's kind of <laughs> funny. Yeah, I mean, there's even a site dedicated to that called BitcoinObituaries.com, and it lists all of the times it's been declared dead. And we'll have to go take a look at it. Several times a year since 2009. The bottom line is Bitcoin uh, refuses to die. And it must be the people, right? And I mean, it's the people, it's the technology is highly decentralized. There is no center to take out. And so as a result, it is a relentless anomaly. It is something that is extremely resilient and persistent. And uh, people will eventually realize that this is not going away and they're going to have to deal with it. Plain devil's advocate. Yes. 2015, we're seeing a lot of centralization occurring from uh -huh. company standpoint and technology standpoint. Yes. What, how do you see Bitcoin kind of growing and maturing and streamlining into that? I've seen the centralization ebb and flow. Sometimes we see more centralization, sometimes we see less. But I think people need to realize that at the absolute worst centralization, Bitcoin is far more decentralized than anything else out there. Even the most centralized Bitcoin out there is an improvement on what we currently have. And I'm not particularly worried that we're heading for that extreme. I think Bitcoin has a way to balance itself because decentralization delivers more value to the end user. And so there will always be a powerful motive and incentive to decentralize, to stay decentralized. Decentralized is less fragile, decentralized is more resilient, decentralized delivers more value. And so it's not a matter of ideology, it's not a matter of purity, it's a matter of utility. Uh, decentralized is better at delivering value, so it will continue to exist. So Reed was just on there saying, you know, it's a global currency and he sees Bitcoin being almost like a network and platform. You know, yes, it is. is. Is that what you see as well? It's both. It's a network, it's a platform, it's a currency. 
um, it's the internet of money, and people are going to build applications. Uh, the currency is just the first app, but it's only the beginning, and we've barely scratched the surface yet. What do you say to people who say Bitcoin's going to die and blockchain will survive? Um, I think that shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what the value proposition is and what Bitcoin and blockchain are. And they're trying to essentially hedge their bets. Because the same people a couple of years ago were making fun of the entire space. But the problem is that now they have to recognize that the technology is real and there's something there. Because it keeps, um, it keeps surviving. And so as a result now they're trying to say, well the currency is silly, but the technology is serious. Uh, I'll give them a couple of years, they're going to realize that they're both pretty serious and they're not going anywhere. So where do you see Bitcoin being valued at eventually? I know right now the price is pretty I, bad. I think ultimately, um, we know when Bitcoin has succeeded, when one Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin. I like that. When we do not longer care about converting into to fiat because the vast majority of transactions you can do within the economy without switching to another currency. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. And plus, do you see Bitcoin in the foreign exchange someday? Um, I, I think uh, we are going to see Bitcoin traded on all kinds of platforms. And a lot of uh, the kind of conservative banks are going to gradually uh, join the game because they won't have a choice. Because there will be enough demand. There's rumors that it's happening now with people creating their own cryptocurrencies. And yes. What do you think about these ideas that maybe there's going to be a new blockchain altogether? Well, I think it's very hard to um, to replace a good idea that has had enough time to be spread and widely adopted. In order to uh, build new blockchains that replace Bitcoin or uh, unseat Bitcoin, you have to provide an incredible amount of differentiation, and I haven't seen anybody do that. There's no reason to look at this as a zero-sum game. There's room in the world for hundreds of currencies and possibly thousands of currencies, and with niche applications, maybe even tens of thousands of currencies. And so it's not an either or, it's everybody joining. Okay, so with the advent of like forking and side chains and Ethereum, can you talk about what cryptocurrency is your favorite, and what te new technology uh, upcoming in 2015 you're watching closely? Well, I'm watching all of the technologies in the space, and honestly, I think the most exciting thing isn't one particular technology or one particular company but how far we've come in just five years from a single currency and single consensus model to so much research and development in different consensus algorithms, different organizing principles, scripting languages, blockchain technologies, uh, a plethora of currencies. Really what we're seeing is an explosion of innovation. Right. And, and it's going to take a while until that settles down. Um, but what's really exciting is that we're no longer talking about just Bitcoin. We're now, you know, Bitcoin is now the foundation, a very deep and solid base of a pyramid. But there is an enormous amount of innovation around Bitcoin, on top of Bitcoin, and adjacent technologies. And so, um, really, we've moved much further from the origins of Bitcoin than I could ever imagine. And the pace is not slowing down. Right. It's actually no, speeding it's up. It's accelerating. It's accelerating. Yeah. Actually, I think sometimes that the regulations and compliance. Sort of, you know, pressure that's been felt in 2014 is making Bitcoin mature and grow and become much more serious. What do you think about that? I think it's mostly irrelevant. I think the regulations are almost completely irrelevant to either the users of Bitcoin or the rest of the world. It doesn't really care. So you don't even think bit license is a big deal. Um, I don't think bit license is a big deal at all. I think bit license will uh, probably restrict the ability of New York banks to enter the space. And so it will end up costing them competitive advantage. It will also possibly hurt the residents of New York. It's not going to help Bitcoin. It's not going to hurt Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't care. Right. Uh, we've got it's... billions well, of people out there who need banking, and they're going to get it, whether uh, Ben Lasky and BitLicense want or not. Uh, quite honestly, this technology uh, is a technology without borders. It's a technology that doesn't require permission to operate. We didn't ask for permission. And uh, people are going to continue to innovate at a very rapid pace. You've got to realize that many of the regulators are fighting against Bitcoin in 2009, and they don't even realize how far from that we already are. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Wall Street, in essence, is already kind of tethering between trying to figure out what to do with itself, right? So it'll be interesting to see where the Bitcoin Wall Street will end up being. <laughs> Wall Street is peddling 1950s technology and expecting consumers to accept that uh, banking hours of 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, are acceptable in 2015. And so uh, all we need to do is give people the ability to experience Bitcoin 
and before long their bank is going to prove to them exactly why it's necessary by doing something boneheaded with their own money and inflaming and enraging them. Uh, most people have had an experience like that with their bank. The best marketing for Bitcoin is how bad the banks are, and they get a chance to prove that every day to thousands of people. Well, I know. There's severe debt. Um, there's a lot of loans that don't really make sense. People don't really understand that their savings are being used for you know, bank expenditures. Right. Capitalization, so... Yeah, I would call that uh, levels of fraud and criminality that are out of this world and the regulators are doing nothing, have done nothing and will do nothing because most of them are owned by, by the banks. And so um, when people talk about regulation in Bitcoin, what I think we should see is when we start seeing bankers going to jail for the crimes that they make, uh, then we can talk about regulators. Until then, regulation in banking hasn't protected a single consumer. All it's done is it's protected banks from competition, and we don't need that. Right. Uh, um, a lot of people are upset with Coinbase for being very monopolistic. What are your views on that? I think at its absolute worst and uh, centralized form, Coinbase is still uh, more decentralized, more open, and less monopolistic than any bank in existence. Uh, and I think they offer a platform that some people want and need and will use. The space is big enough that uh, we can uh, choose what we want to use. Uh, they haven't forced anybody to use them. Uh, they, uh, so I, I don't see any problem with Coinbase. If you don't like what Coinbase is doing, do something else and do it better. Right. Well, I mean, actually they're pretty open in the structure of approaching new technology, new companies and acquisitions. Absolutely. At the very least, they're making it very hard. Uh, for the media to continue with this narrative that Bitcoin is just for drug dealers and no serious people would put their money in Bitcoin. And yet we see very serious people putting, serious within quotes, but very serious people, very large institutions putting their money into Coinbase, which then makes the journalists look ridiculous. Right. Because didn't you just say this thing died a week ago? And now it's still you know, here. the CEO of Citigroup is putting in millions of dollars into this. How is that possible? Someone's lying, and uh, or someone has completely misunderstood the truth. Sensationalism. Yeah, sensationalism. <laughs> exactly. Right. So Bitcoin Headline is sell. It's Bit dying. <laughs> Bitcoin is dead, and the CEO was arrested. Let's all move on. Well, we're going to continue innovating and just ignore that noise. With the O'Reilly Summit, what do you think of this conference? And then, what do you think are the risks, rewards, and realities of Bitcoin? I think this conference, I mean, the setting is absolutely stunning. What a beautiful uh, view of the bay and the bridge. It's a gorgeous location. Um, these conferences are useful. They uh, give us an opportunity to present the technology in a very uh, structured, organized, and you know, quality way in terms of the visuals and things like that. But honestly, I have to tell you that over the last four days, I've been going to local meetups every single day and presenting at the local community for free with no ticket fees, open to the public. And to me, that's the most important part of Bitcoin, which is uh, the community. And the community is growing fast. The community is strong. It's passionate. And uh, I love spending most of my time at meetups talking directly to other Bitcoiners. Yeah, we loved having you at Dogecoin. That was fun. Yeah, so that was Hopefully a lot you'll of fun be at too. Dogecoin SF number two. Absolutely, I would love to. <laughs> and then hopefully you'll be on stage and say, well, screw that. Who wants to hear about this? That yeah. was a great moment. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, yes, Andreas. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. I yeah, appreciate always that. Always full of surprises. You know? Yes, I tried to keep it fun. You got it. Well, so do we. But yes. you know that. We're zany. <laughs> yes. That's We're right. Of course. Wacky. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be part of the lunatic fringe of Bitcoin, you might as well have fun while you're doing it. Everybody's going to call you crazy. Everybody's going to say that you're uh, wasting your time getting involved in this technology. So if you're not having fun while doing that, what are you doing? I mean, that's that's the whole point. Well, big risk, big reward, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, think, uh, I don't think there's really risk in learning skills and acquiring knowledge and developing yourself as a software engineer as uh, in any skill you have. Learning about cryptocurrencies and, and developing those skills uh, that's an investment that pays off. It, uh, it improves you as a person, it improves your ability to work in this space and other spaces. And uh, you know you can't lose your life savings by investing in skills. So right. that's, I always emphasize, you know, if you want to invest in Bitcoin, invest in the skills. Learn how to use Bitcoin to build a startup, to create a job, to code something, to build something, um, and to follow your passion in a way that involves Bitcoin somehow. And that's something where you can't lose. Uh, you, you, you end up, at the end of it, even if it, none of it works out, you're still left with those skills. No one can take them away. So you don't, 
coming from that angle, do you think that there are any risks in Bitcoin? There are massive risks in Bitcoin, absolutely. There are massive risks in Bitcoin. This is a, a, an area of very rapid innovation and entrepreneurial uh, spirit. There's a lot of people taking massive risks. Uh, it's not unlike any new technologies. You know, you see at the beginning of the automobile, the beginning of electricity, the beginning of uh, the development of the railroads in the United States. Enormous risks, uh, enormous successes, but also enormous failures. Lots of frauds, lots of sharks, lots of uh, scammers, but at the same time also lots of brilliant uh, people uh, developing incredible things that benefit society as a whole in the end. So you've got to go in with your eyes wide open and, and be careful who you deal with. But um, you know it's incredibly rewarding if you do it right. I agree. Well, obviously we're here. Yes. <laughs> and then that's the reward because yes. the reward could be maybe five years from now or even two years from now. I, I get rewarded every single day by meeting amazing people in this community. I'm not waiting for some reward in the future. Every day in this space is fun. No truer words and better words were spoken. Actually, yeah. actually you. today we were learning about blockchain university. They were saying people could learn how to actually build on the cryptography of blockchain every day. Yes, I'm. I'm scale. very interested in efforts at education, educating thousands and thousands of developers. Uh, is going to be critical for uh, Bitcoin's long-term success, but it, it's not it's not difficult to recruit people into uh, training for development in Bitcoin because we have jobs. Lots and, of jobs. And we have jobs in this space, which is something that is extremely rare nowadays, and we have an exciting technology that's fascinating to learn. So you have fun learning it, and there's a job uh, possibility at the end of it. What are the top three things you're most excited about in 2015 for Bitcoin? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. There's so many things. I uh, one of the problems I have is that I get excited about everything related to Bitcoin, <laughs> so I can't really discriminate between them. That's a good answer. You're always very good at the really good diplomatic answers. Thank you. How do we get you to answer a question right? But you're gonna you be late for your panel. I have to do my yes. I yes. have to get ready. Well, good luck. I so can't wait to see it. It's Absolutely. gonna be phenomenal. As Thank always. you. I hope so. Yeah. Thank well, you. and say hi to your three cats. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye, guys.